You've now been studying, let's say, for example, BGP for a little bit of time for your CCIE, but now you're ready to build a lab. Well, you want to join me next as we actually see how to do that. All right, before we get started, make sure you, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as hit the bell for notifications so that you can see these as a post as well. Well, let's go ahead and jump right into this as two. Now, when it comes down to actually building a lab, where should I actually start? So depending on what you're actually doing, it's always one of these things, you have a couple of different options. I'm gonna kind of choose maybe the harder option of the two uh, to actually do, because this is kind of one where you can free form a little bit more. So the first option is simple. You can probably go out to the internet, or if you've bought a lab guidebook, you can simply reproduce that for what you're going to do. Now, even if you're doing that, even if you're following a lab guide, I recommend that you actually build your own topology. In other words, actually write it down on paper if you need to. That muscle memory is gonna really help you out because you're gonna actually feel that and actually see that and understand that and that will imprint on your mind a little bit more. Now, in my situation, I don't have a particular lab guide that I'm following, but I have actually studied the topics that I wanna ensure that I have kind of down and that I want to be able to actually test on as well. So for me, I'm actually gonna begin right here with a piece of paper. Now we're doing it electronically. I'm gonna use a simple diagrams tool to help us out. But this is where I would begin is by manually actually drawing out what I need to and then going through the list of different topics that I want to cover and verify that my topology that I'm gonna create and that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a topology is something that I can actually see how that works. Now I do recommend if you're actually doing this like I am on some type of diagramming, make sure you also print that out because you're gonna to want to refer to that later as you also begin to kind of innovate and build off of that too. So when I actually started to do this, even when I started with CCNA studies as well as CCNP and even now into the CCIE, I always wanted to make sure that I covered everything that I need to. So I want to build a topology that essentially covers the different types of uh, uh, configurations that I need to verify and I need to make sure that I know how to run. So I need to make sure it actually covers all those different things that we're actually going to do. Also, of course, as I build it, I want to make sure that my IP addressing scheme is gonna be clear and easy. Now, that doesn't mean on the CCIE exam you actually get nice, clear, and easy links and topologies, but while you're practicing and while you're actually speeding up your particular muscle memory to help you as you get ready for that exam, I want you to make it as easy as possible on your end to help you out. So we'll talk about how that actually helps out too, okay? And then, of course, I wanna make sure that in the end here, that it's expandable. In other words, if I know that I need to add in some things, have I left enough available space for me to actually add in another router if I want to, or to actually add in different technologies as well? Now, as we actually start to do that, right, we can simply add in whatever we're actually going to be working with. So for example, I know these are small for right now, but you can begin to build and design them however it is that you want to, right? But what you're doing is you're checking for those different things that you want to be able to do and verify. So for me, I've been studying my BGP, just really getting started. So I know that I'm not really at the advanced level of BGP, but I wanna verify that I have a couple of things here. I wanna be able to do EGP, EBGP peerings, as well as IBGP peerings. I want to, of course, be able to verify that I have the routing protocols that I can actually run between those routers. I wanna also be able to do peerings with loopbacks if I choose to, and also be able to run the different show commands as well. Now, depending on how complex you get it, I tend to make them a little bit more over complex, but you can do it as simple as actually using two or three separate routers. But because I have access to the CML, I'm actually gonna use, well, six routers instead. So here's kind of that beginning process. You don't need to see me kind of build that out. But ultimately in the end, here is the topology that I ended up with. And you might be wondering like, how did I come up with that? Well, it was just using those different aspects that I wanted to be able to test with. So inside of between routers two or one, two and three up here, I wanna be able to configure inside of a single autonomous system here for my IBGP peerings, okay? I also said that I needed to configure loopback addresses 
So on each of these routers here, I'm gonna use loopback addresses for also, of course, doing those peerings. So I know I need to configure those two. And also, of course, in these links here, you want to, of course, be able to configure those. Now I'm gonna use a slash 24 for just about everything uh, at this point because it's actually easier for me than to have to try and do all the subnetting and try and do all that. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't know how to do that, but just to make it easy and you can to, uh, to you to be able to build that muscle memory that we're talking about as you do the configuration, this is what's gonna happen. Now, I make this also easy for me in the very sense that at least because I'm using a slash 24, the third octet here is gonna represent the links on those routers, right? So here's router one and router two. Now also what I do with the fourth octet is that that will represent the router number itself. So for example, on router one going between router one and router two, that will be 10.0.12.1. And over here on this end, that will be 10.0.12.2. Over on this side, same thing, because this is router three, that would be 10.0.13.3. And we would continue to follow that all the way down through here. So there is going to be where I would actually configure my IBGP peerings. Now, for me, I also wanted to be able to configure external BGP peerings as well. So notice I have a link between router 2 and router 4. And I've also decided that on my AS numbers, I started with 65,000 and I included in the router numbers that I'm gonna include in here. So notice this one's 65,123. This one's gonna be 65,004. Once again, that doesn't mean on the exam you'll get these numbers, but as you're actually doing the practicing, it's easier for you to go through and have it in your memory instead of looking it up all the time that you know what's gonna be assigned here too. So same thing here with the IP addresses, we do that. And also, of course, over on the other side, Router six, I ended up adding in at the last moment because I wanted to be able to also, of course, use the BGP attributes that I'm going to be doing here. So I could actually see that list where I have, of course, learning about uh, the different networks and getting that uh, idea of one side actually having a shorter AS path than the other. I wanna make sure I actually got all that in here. So notice on this side, going from router one to router two to router six, well, that's gonna give me two ASs to be able to go through and then on this side, I actually have three, okay? So that kind of allows me to see all the stuff that I need to be able to see, okay? Now, the only last thing that I did not actually put on here uh, as well is that I want to practice the advertisements in the BGP as well. So I know that that's something I'm gonna need to include in, but that's why I keep that list there, but I could have actually even added in another, uh, let's say loopback address for each of these routers here to say, I'm gonna use this to actually prove my advertisements for actually getting to where I need to. So I could do that. Now, what about these loopback addresses? Do I always have to use the quad ones or twos or threes or fours? No, that's just for ease more than anything else. You can use whatever numbers that you want to. So for example, if I wanna do that additional uh, network that I'm gonna be able to advertise in the BGP, this one up here on router one, I might do quad 11s. Over on router two, quad 22s over on router three, it's just for the sake of ease when you're actually building your lab environment as you get to that point. So once you get to that point then, and you now have this, I do recommend, like I said, make sure it's actually physically there for you to refer to, because now you have to choose to be able to implement that into your lab environment. So whether it's physical equipment that you have, or what I'm gonna use is the CML, you want to be able to build this and verify that it actually matches up to your diagram as well. So the way that I did that is over here in CML2, uh, two, I kind of built the same thing. So you see router one, router two, router three, and there's router four, five, and six, and then I added in the links in between. Now you may be wondering, why didn't I put all that information on CML2? It's because I don't have that ability to. So that's why the diagram's really gonna be very helpful to me as I begin my actual practical lab studies in verifying those types of configurations that I need to. So you want to make sure that it actually does match up a little bit and also that you have the links here. Now, here's something else I wanted to add in to our little session here today is that when I actually create those links, 
I try and match them up on one side where they are the same length. Now you'll not always get to do that, but if you don't, make sure you write it out on your diagram how that link is going to go. So that is just for the ease of configuration as I begin my practice to do that. So over here on this side, they're actually uh, the gigabit ethernet zero slash zeros. Over on the right hand side here, let me see if I can show this to you. This one is actually gigabit ethernet zero slash one and over on the other side as well. Just again for ease when you're actually doing the practice itself. All right, now once you get that up and going, it now should be ready for you to go ahead and begin whatever lab that you want to begin with. Now, we're not actually gonna do that in this particular episode. And the reason why is that I actually have a different approach at how I want to judge how much I've actually learned. And that is, of course, is by doing an assessment at the beginning. Now, that, in, that assessment that we're actually gonna be doing is not gonna be in this episode, but that very next episode, we'll walk through what it is I want to configure and we'll show you how well I do there. But make sure you stay tuned for that. But that will do it for my CCIE journey today and hope to see you next time.